Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. Um, now we are going to discuss uh, uh, the economic analysis of financial regulations. So in this theme, in this area, uh, the subtopics that we are going to cover, why uh, e financial regulation is important, uh, what all makes financial, relevant, uh, financial regulation relevant, and in order to regulate uh, financial sector, what are the tools are being used by the regulator. Uh, these are all the themes that uh, we are going to discuss. So to begin with, first uh, we are going to discuss uh, why uh, is regulator, uh, to examine why is regulators uh, use value at risk as the measure uh, to minimize investment risk. Uh, so that is uh, to minimize the investment risk, that is one of the objective of regulation. So in this context, why regulators use uh, value at risk as the measure? So in this way, uh, topic we further discuss this theme uh, by what is meant by risk in the case of investment risk, what is meant by investment risk and then we will discuss uh, some of the statistical measure used in uh, analyzing or measuring investment risk. Then there we will see what kind of uh, measure. Uh, regulators are interested to use and then subsequently we will discuss other kinds of risk that the systematic and idiosyncratic risk and some of the strategies for uh, risk reduction including hedging and diversification. So coming to the first part, investment risk is a measure of uncertainty about the future payoff to an investment uh, assessed over some time horizon and relate you to a benchmark. So it has several features, the characteristics of investment risk when uh, as per our def definition. So one you know that uh, is a measure that can be quantified, that is one. Uh, second one is risk arises from uncertainty about the future. And the third one uh, is risk has to do with uh, the future payoff of an investment uh, which is unknown. So that means the future payoff in most investment uh, is uncertain, right? That is what is all about the investment is going to make is riskier. So that is the third aspect. And the fourth one uh, is that risk ref refers to an investment or group of investments. So that means the term investment here broadly include everything from and the balance in a bank account to shares of a mutual fund to a lottery ticket and real estate. So these are all investments uh, that we refer here. Risk must be assessed over some time horizon. Every investment has a time horizon. We hold some investment for a day or two and others for many years. So in most cases, uh, the risk of holding an investment over a short period is smaller than the risk of holding it over a long one. But there are important exceptions to the rule that we will discuss uh, someday, sometime in the one of the later session. Finally, risk must be assessed relative to a benchmark uh, rather than in isolation. So someone tells you that an investment is risky. So normally we say that relative to what? Investment is risky but relative to what? So that is an another important area that the relative to an investment with no risk at all. That is the benchmark that we will be using. That means the benchmark is a uh, risk free investment. Uh, Let us now discuss how to measure risk. So since now we are familiar with the uh, definition of risk, what is meant by investment risk. So let us see what are the approaches of measuring risk. So in the case of measuring risk, um, there are three aspects. One is possibilities and second one is probabilities and the third one is uh, expected outcomes. So about the possibilities, you know that what are the possible outcomes when you make an investment. So it can be explained by using the example of 
uh, tossing a coin. So, when you toss a coin, so what are all the possible outcomes? Obviously, you know that there are only two and only two, right? That means the two po possibilities uh, because the coin can come down either heads or tails. So, that is the possibility, two possibilities here we just mentioned. Similarly, for investment, there will be uh, several possibilities will be there. So, that we will discuss in appropriate context sometime, uh, some in this session itself, some in the future sessions. Then coming to the second aspects, probability, what is the probability? So, coming taking the same example uh, of the coin that the, what is the chance of each one of these two outcomes occurring? So, if the coin is fair, uh, it will come down heads half the time and obviously tails the other half, that is what we mean by fair here. So, if we, fair, we toss a fair coin over and over again, thousands of times, millions of times, uh, it would come down heads half the time and tails other half. So, for any individual toss, uh, the coin has an equal chance of coming down heads or tail. So, when we quantify here, you know that this is the probability of uh, head coming up is going to be 0 0.5 that the half 50 percentage, uh, 0 0.5 is the probability and tail obviously you know that is also 0 0.5 that the half. Uh, one half. So, this is the probability. So, probability means as you, are, you may be aware that actually is a measure of the uh, likelihood uh, of an event will occur. So, it is always expressed as a number between 0 and 1. So, closer the probability is to 0, the less likely it is that the event will occur. So, that is about the probability. Then the outcome here we know already that means the outcome is head and another outcome is a tail, heads and tails. So, when then coming to this possibility is that there are two possibilities and these are the two probability, probability that is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, the outcome is heads and tails. This is a simple example by using the example of tossing a coin that we are also familiar. So, let us apply this one in the context of investment. So, what are the possibilities, probabilities and outcomes and plus we need to include uh, when you invest there is an expected return as well that also we need to include when we elaborate this example. So, in order to discuss this let us take the case of two alternative investment scenarios uh, of 1000 dollar. So, throughout this discussion let us take an investment of 1000 dollar with expected return of 1050. So, that the same expected return we are getting from two alternative uh, investments. Then in this case, uh, let us see how we can relate it with the possibilities, probability and outcomes. So, let us take the case one investment, uh, assume that for 1000 you can purchase a stock uh, whose value uh, is equally likely to fall to 700 that is one possibility that um, with a probability of 0 0.5 when you invest 1000 in a stock uh, maybe when the stock market down it can go down to uh, 700. Uh, so, the stock value equally likely to fall to uh, 700 that is one possibility. Uh, another outcome is going to be it can rise uh, to 1400. So, we will refer uh, the amount uh, you could get back to an as, an as the investment is payoff. So, what is the payoff here? The payoff here is the probability, right. So, the probability of becoming that they falling the stock price from 1000 to 700 is 0 0.5. So, the payoff, the um, payoff that you are going to get is uh, 700, then the payoff times probability is going to be 0 0.5 times 700 that is dollar uh, 350, right. So, um, that is in the case 1 that the uh, possibility 1, uh, in possibility number 2 when the stock price increase uh, the payoff is 1400 and the probability of getting that one is 700 right that the payoff times uh, probability. So, in this case uh, let us see uh, in this uh, we need to calculate now um, the expected value of the investment. It is straightforward, you know that expected value is the sum of the probability times the payoff. That means this, this plus uh, this, that means when summing you will be getting 1050. That is the payoff, the expected value of the investment uh, from this investment is uh, 1050. 
So normally in general the expected value concept that the expected value of an investment uh, is a very useful concept but it can be difficult at first. The problem is that uh, if we make this investment only once uh, we will obtain either 700 either we will get either 700 or uh, 1400 not 1050 right we won't be getting uh, these 1050 once. However, in fact uh, regardless of the number of times we make this particular investment uh, the payoff will never be 1000, uh, 1050 it is never going to be 1050. But uh, the relevancy here is that what would happen if we uh, made to make this investment 1 million times maybe half a million times those investment would pay 1400 uh, another half million times we will get uh, 700. Right. So, at the end uh, again we are going to get if you do the calculation then obviously we are going to get the expected value uh, 1050. So, yeah, however the, the actually since the future is uncertain we do not know exactly how much will be the payoff. So, so, since there is uncertainty in that context actually we can use this uh, expected value uh, as one of the measure to understand uh, the what is the outcome of the return a uh, possible return uh, from the investment. So, in this case from what are the measures uh, that are commonly used to measure this risk for example, in this investment in this investment or what are the measures of risk that we can use commonly there is one measure that is very commonly used to measure the risk of an investment. So, one of the measure that is actually variance uh, and standard deviation. So, in the case of variance, uh, variance is defined uh, as the average of the square deviations of the possible outcomes uh, from their uh, expected values weighted by their uh, probabilities. Let us take the example that which we just mentioned now the two cases so of the one case we already discussed that that is this one uh, the case one is investment of 1000 uh, with an expected uh, expected value of 1050. And out of this let us calculate uh, the standard deviation uh, of this investment. So, how to calculate I think you must be familiar with this kind of concept. So, let us have a quick review of how to calculate uh, the standard deviation of this investment. So, what you need to do the expected value expected value is the this times uh, this that is uh, 1050 first calculate the expected value then calculate this one that the subtract the expected value uh, from uh, each of the possible payoff that means uh, one actually 1400 uh, minus 1050 is equal to 350 that is um, uh, one uh, po sub the in the process uh, that is one uh, first one step another we need to calculate um, 700 that is the payoff minus the expected value. Uh, that is 1050 is equal to minus uh, 350. So, then the procedure for calculating SD here is first the variance calculation square each of the results that the 350 square. So, that means uh, you will be getting this uh, and this. So, square each of the results and multiply the results uh, times its probability and add up to the add up the results. So, finally, you will be getting uh, this uh, as the square of uh, each results. Then calculating the standard deviation is SD is equal to the variance uh, square root of variance then you will be getting this one is equal to 350. So, in this case you can see that the standard deviation is going to be uh, 350. Uh, let us now take another example another case investment case 2 where the scenario is say the investment is same 1000 and again we are going to get the same expected value here as well 1050. Let us see the payoff the standard deviation of this investment. Uh, so, standard deviation of this investment again we have here we take 4 possibilities number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4 and the probability uh, we are having uh, these values. And the payoff in one investment suppose the same 
for example you are buying a stock uh, you are going to get uh, the stock price from 1000 it may fall down to 100 that means you are going to make a loss of 900 and it may go down to 4 or 700 uh, it may rise to 1400 and if it, there is a huge um, uh, bull in the market then the bullish market you can see that it can go up to uh, 2000 so these are the four payoff then the payoff times probability that we can already calculate from here uh, then you will be getting uh, these values so in this scenario how do we calculate the standard deviation so the standard deviation um, you will be getting the, the stuff that we discussed already payoff minus expected value then you will be getting these values uh, payoff minus um, expected value square uh, then the variance variance is the sum of uh, probability times square deviation of the payoff from expected value that is going to be yeah this times 0 0.1 uh, this times uh, 0 0.4 uh, times 0 0.4 again uh, times 0 0.1 this one then what are the value that we are getting we need to add this one uh, together um, uh, maybe we can say the here the variance that you are getting here is um, variance here is equal to sum of uh, probability times prob uh, times square deviation square deviation of payoff from expected value expected value uh, that we will be getting 0 0.1 times uh, 902 uh, times um, then plus 0 0.4 0 .4 uh, times uh, 1000 to uh, sorry uh, 1 to 2 500 uh, plus uh, 0 0.4 times 500 plus 0 0.1 times 9 to uh, 500 then you will be getting the value that you will be getting from this calculation is 278500 um, dollar square dollar square this is the value you are going to get so the standard deviation of this one that this is the value that you are going to get so the standard deviation of this one is going to be uh, 528 so let us look at the previous case um, that the, we got the standard deviation uh, of 350 uh, from this investment and in the second investment we are going to get a standard deviation of 528 so looking from uh, these two investment uh, one is having a standard deviation of 350 and the another is having a standard deviation of 528 so normally a firm an investment fund they will be preferring the investment investment strategy of case one in fact this one they will be preferring because the standard deviation uh, the risk spread is low and they will be preferring uh, this investment this is from the perspective uh, of uh, an investor or an institutional investor for example but from the perspective this is the most common measure of risk uh, but in the perspective of regulator we need to take a different approach of measuring risk this may not yield the correct uh, measurement of the risk uh, let us see why so because here suppose the risk is very low but at the same time you know sir, that that means for example no one is interested in a discount price uh, for a life insurance policy from an insurance company that is poor financial conditions no one wants the local bank to close its door even if it's giving uh, the standard deviation the measure that we are getting is very low and is giving high payoff uh, but similarly neither the customer nor the government regulators care how well or how badly a financial institution shareholders fare so long as they do well enough to keep the doors open so in this case suppose if there is the means for example what if the insurance company collapse what if the bank collapse so that means the catastrophic loss 
right that's a catastrophic loss so even uh, no one individual investor institutional investor or government they don't want to see that kind of outcome that the worst outcome they don't want to see so in this case the concept used to uh, assess this sort of catastrophic risk is called value at risk so let us examine how the concept called value at risk work so to understand uh, this one let us take an example of uh, that you are considering buying a house with a loan of 1 lakh let us, let us take uh, this example and given your um, economic condition uh, you can afford uh, an emi of dollar 650 the assumption here is that you cannot afford given your salary can pay conditions and all you can afford maximum uh, 650 emi per month so here the question is the type of mortgage what kind of mortgage suppose you find a nice house and you want to buy and you can afford only 650 but when you want to take a loan uh, you need to decide on the type of mortgage to get so should it have a fixed or flexible rate the adjustable rate so the answer is different for different people so in your case uh, let us see if we can organize our thinking with regard to this example and see and clearly that this person cannot afford uh, more than 650 per month then in this case let us see take the case of a mortgage loan uh, mortgage loan with an example that the for example for a 30 year term loan so in the case of a 30 year term loan one alternative is a fixed interest rate that is 4 percentage per month so the 4 percentage interest rate the emi accordingly the emi coming is going to be 475 that is a monthly payment of 475 which is uh, within this person's budget because maximum he can afford uh, 650 so the one alternative here is alternative 2 is a 3 percentage flexible interest rate that the starting interest rate is uh, 3 percentage but the concern here is that uh, this interest rate is flexible that means uh, it may go up or it may go down so in this case if there is no change the, actually this is the flexible uh, flexible interest rate that means when the market interest rate uh, goes increase then this interest rate go will, will increase to 4 percentage uh, 5 percentage uh, 6 percentage like that so suppose if the market rate is going to be same there is no KMR change in market rate of interest then the EMI is going to be 420 to start with so you know that in the case of investment one uh, you know that the standard deviation is zero right standard deviation is zero in the second case uh, obviously you know that we don't know the exactly how much is the standard deviation without getting what is going to be the market rate of interest but obviously we know that is going to be greater than zero because there is a possibility that market rate of interest will change so obviously there is possible variation uh, in interest rate over 30 years uh, so two scenarios one what if no change in interest rate then obviously you know that if there is no change in interest rate alternative two is the best option because instead of going for a simple calculation instead of going for a uh, four percentage fixed interest rate is better to go for the lower rate uh, three percentage provided that there is no uh, increase in interest rate even if it decrease if go to two percentage then is even further uh, even better right even better uh, what if is keep on increasing so think about the scenario what if the rate of interest uh, increase uh, but that means if the rate of interest increase that means this is the risk risk is here mainly when the rate of interest increase for example when it goes to uh, 10 percentage so that initial monthly payment okay fine it looks attractive but uh, when we know that when the rate of interest keep on increasing in the market uh, suppose uh, initially uh, it raised to 2 percentage suppose the interest rate could raise 2 percent per year for the next 4 years that means suppose uh, the rate of interest uh, R is going to increase uh, to every year is going to increase 2 percentage so then you know that the risk is that the initially first you need to second first year you need to increase pay uh, initially the five, 535 if you would take the rate of interest is not 3 percentage instead if you take uh, 5 percentage is going to be 535 second year if it goes further then you are going to pay uh, 665 and if it goes further then third year you are going to pay 800 
800 right this keep on increasing so that means if the two percentage increase in the rate of interest per annum when we offer flexible you know that the EMI is going to become in the third year EMI is going to become 800 so you already seen that this person can afford uh, only 650 what if it further increases uh, you know that if keep on increasing then this person's uh, actually all his plans actually it get all derailed and you know that uh, he will be uh, sometimes he may lose even his uh, mortgage house because he cannot uh, pay back so in this case what we can see that uh, this kind of scenario sometimes this worse the rate of interest can go to 10 percentage uh, then even the worst case is happening right so that actually the concept that we are going to uh, discuss here uh, that is called the concept of value of risk so look at here this two uh, investment in the two investment look for example suppose investment that is case one so in case one you can see that the worst case there are two pay of two possibilities uh, one is uh, one two the you can see the pay of one with the pay of uh, 700 the person invests uh, 1000 that is the example we have taken but the, um, the stock value can go down to 700 then second second option is that a uh, second uh, possibility is that the stock price can uh, increase to 1400 so look at the case one uh, if the going down the worst case of loss here is this one that means uh, he invested 1000 but it became 700 so the worst loss uh, in case one is uh, 300 and in case two uh, the worst case you know there, there are the four possibilities uh, the payoff in each possibility is each outcome you can see that 100 700 1400 2000 etc but if the worst loss happening because either of this one will happen suppose uh, the worst loss is for example this outcome the possibility one happens possibility one happen then the worst loss that their investment is 1000 but uh, the payoff is only 100 then the loss is going to be uh, 900 what if uh, this investment instead of an individual investor uh, look at uh, take this one for example uh, the case of an institutional investor for example a pension fund uh, has invested this made this kind of investment and you know that uh, in this case uh, in the case 2 you can see that uh, this is the worst case uh, loss is more with the case 2 right and suppose uh, we may add this one instead of this 100 that 900 this one uh, if you add million uh, after it suppose these are all million or billion dollars uh, then you know actually it matters so when it comes to this part value at risk is the worst possible loss uh, over a specific uh, time horizon at a given probability so in this case value at risk is this 900 is the value at risk that means the payoff this one and this is the value at risk uh, using the value at risk we can see that case 2 is the worst one as compared to case 1 because here the maximum loss is 300 in case 1 but in case 2 the maximum loss is uh, 900 so let us summarize this uh, concept so the value at risk is the worst possible loss over a uh, specific time horizon at a given probability and especially this measure we will find very useful uh, in discussing the management and regulation of financial institutions so what uh, by restricting the source of financial instruments bank can hold bank managers financial regulators try to limit the chances of financial collapse so importantly such a collapse is an example of infrequent but potentially catastrophic even sometimes called tail risk or black swans for like for example uh, enormous uh, earthquake the earthquake happened in uh, Gujarat similarly uh, similar events uh, similarly when you approach this one put this one in the investment case if there is a huge loss or even an insurance company insuring some uninsurable risk uh, so that actually the regulator won't allow so simply to summarize this phone uh, what we do that actually uh, regulators especially use this concept that the value at risk when they advise when they look at the different investment uh, strategies of um, investment funds uh, for example particularly public funds including pension funds etc uh, regulator uh, take a look at the what is the maximum uh, worst case of case of loss uh, that kind of investment won't be uh, encouraged and in the next session we will continue uh, some more discussion of some more concepts related to risk 
and subsequently we move to uh, more making what are the rational for uh, uh, regulation uh, in the um, uh, financial market. Thank you and see you in the next session.